All right, guys, just because I think that it's probably time to say my piece and move on uh, in the interest of everybody. And also because, for good reason, I understand people are, um, you know, putting their arm around me and saying, Ben, like, you probably should not say these things. Um, you know, you could really get in trouble. Um, uh, which is, which is, I mean, I would say that um, to them if I had uh, their level of knowledge. And I appreciate the intent behind it, and it's because people care about me. Um, and I really, really, really appreciate that. That being said, I have the full amount of knowledge. Um, and um, it, it's anybody that knows me knows that, for, for one thing, I, I have absolute reverence for our legal system and believe in the rule of law and the dignity of every person and, 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 and the decency. Just the fundamental, at the end of the day, fundamental human rights that it embodies. I absolutely call me a Boy Scout or a dreamer, but I, I really, really, really believe in these things. It should not offend, it, it should not surprise anyone who knows me that um, it offends me uh, in a special way to see up close and personal with my own eyes the rule of law undermined. And I do not think it acceptable for me to stay silent as a legal matter, as an officer of the court, uh, or as a moral matter, as a man. That's, that's it. But, um, but I understand, it, I think it's important, just, you know, everybody's kind of, Ben, what are you doing here? And, and, and uh, you know, some confusion about my, my Facebook post the other day uh, has helped me come to realize that I think people uh, don't quite understand what's going on. And uh, uh, I don't want to cause concern for, uh, uh, you know, on the part of other people about me. Guys, it's, don't be alarmed. Uh, basically, it's very simple. Uh, I had business in a certain court. I saw things that I thought were totally inappropriate and wrong and probably illegal. Uh, I spoke up about them increasingly over time. Uh, and, uh, you know, those who were engaged, engaging, uh, continue to engage in this kind of thing, uh, which generally can be uh, uh, characterized as, as preferential treatment, preferential access to justice and preferential justice being dispensed to, um, you know, a cliquish few by, uh, through the actions and influence of certain you know, people at the court, not the presiding judge, and I have been careful, hopefully, out of fairness to his honor, fairness to the court, and out of my respect to the court, to make clear that I have no proof whatsoever that the presiding judge in my cases has anything to do with this or does anything about it. In fact, it is precisely on account of that um, knowledge void, I think, in part because of the volume of cases that um, you know, have been being handled by the court, which is double duty. Um, since the last judge down there uh, was impeached, you know, it's not like it should surprise anybody that uh, you know, if there were corruption at the Kenton Family Court. I mean, it, let's observe this. I mean, there's three judges that have been impeached uh, in the history of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, which goes back a while. Three. Uh, the most recent one was like, at the Kenton County Family Court. So I don't know that like people would recoil and be like, wow, that's so surprising. No, it, it would just mean that we didn't fully clean out the attic the first time we tried to clean it out. And I think that's probably true. And there's probably some overlap. I don't know. I want to speak from a position of knowledge, but there's some like reasonable inferences that could be drawn here. But in any event, I certainly want to be fair to the presiding judge. Um, I have no feelings one way or another. Uh, really, really, honestly, personally, don't find fault. I have no reason, have seen that, to find fault. Um, you have to trust people. I clerk for judges, two separate federal judges. Um, if I wanted to exercise mischief uh, and affect justice, scary as that may uh, seem, it never occurred to me, but I probably could have, and it never would have been the, uh, you know, the judge's fault that I, I worked for. You know, I could direct a trade. I mean, I couldn't decide anything myself, but I could cause it to be decided that way. And that's the same kind of thing here. So along the same, I, I want to just, it seems like, you know, I'm spending a lot of time on this. Other people are spending a lot of time on this because um, it continues, you know. 
Um, and obviously, it is a big part of my life um, in, insofar as I have to spend time on. Um, so today is just like that day, I guess, where I'm going to put this stuff on Facebook, <laughs> which I guess I should do before the same people. It's the very same people who are doing this stuff. They are the only ones I've ne who, let's be clear, who have asked the court to get me to stop saying these things on Facebook. Hmm. Katie, that's interesting. I do. 20 things like that. Like, I mean, guys, if you're on this side, trust me, all the dots line up. But I'm not, I would never step forward and say these things if it were a matter of inference. I would not. I think it's my moral duty to be extremely cautious and extremely prudent, both for my own good and for the good of anyone that I might unfairly accuse or the dignity of the institution itself, which I revere. It is out of love for the Kenton family court that I speak up now and say that its actors have corrupted it. I don't perceive this as being disrespectful to the court, which is not a person or people. It is an institution. But rather, an absolute reverence for the rule of law and the things that I believe in who have been taught to me by so many other people who I know believe the same thing, including the magnificent men that were federal judges that I worked for. Their voices on my shoulder are not telling me to shut up, ignore this stuff, put my head down, serve my own interests, protect myself, and move on. I assure you, their voices in my head are telling me to do the very same thing that they, their voices have always told me to do. And other magnificent judicial actors that I've had the privilege of being colleagues with and, 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 and working for prior to them being judges and, and, and then over there. All of these people have taught me the same thing. They've said it differently. Some with a deep Eastern Kentucky twang some with a refined Lexingtonian southern draw, and others in the crisp uh, staccato, uh, with the staccato intonation of, 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 you know, some of those, I was from another place, but I ended up in Northern Kentucky, you know, kind of, kind of speech patterns that um, I've heard countless times. It's all taken different forms. They all tell me the same thing. Always had then do the right thing. Just do the right thing. Don't overcomplicate it. Do the right thing. That's all they've asked of me. Very frankly, I, 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 I think that's all I've asked of other people. Do all you can to figure out what the right thing is and then do it without regard to the consequences simply because it is the right thing to do. And I have no doubt that they were present here today and tell me the same thing. It's not like I woke up today in a bad mood. It's not like I woke up today and accumulated the hundreds of pages of documents that I've been putting out for a long time. It's not hard to, you know, prove this stuff. Um, I've certainly thought about it. No one need be concerned uh, about me. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing. I absolutely know what I'm doing. I absolutely knew what the consequences would be before I did it. None of which have been you know, helpful for me. I mean, I think that we could fairly characterize um, my actions as, I don't want to say sacrificial in a way, uh, but um, I mean, I certainly have benefited from this. Ask Katie how much I've got. Katie, what's it about? Close to 15000 Okay, close to 15000 I mean, doing the right thing here has cost me at the very least, just as to right now, 15000 How many jail sentences I have? Do we also, I don't think that, like, whether somebody has a jail sentence should really ever be a matter of doubt. As a white collar criminal attorney, I have some strong beliefs about what the law is and the constitutional like due process requisites. And like, you should never like if somebody's sentenced to jail, that should never be a question. Am I? Or am I? But Katie says no. I don't know that that's the case. But no one in the world, look, no one should ever have the following experience, which I myself had, and I'm not going to debate whether I had it or not. No one should ever be sitting at their desk and have a, an order brought into their desk, sentencing, scheduling a sentencing in a case. That's over for things that happened two years ago. Now, I'm not going to debate whether that happened. 
because it happened to me. And I understand why. I mean, that was, was that less than a month ago, Katie? It was. None of these things happen, guys. None of these things happen before I open my big fat mouth, okay? And uh, I mean, it's things like that, that that are, I'm not going to debate whether that is absolutely crazy, should never happen in a million years, and is absolutely, totally inappropriate. If it should happen at all, and I really can't imagine that it did, okay, or that, that it should. If it were going to happen, I'm not going to debate that that is not the way uh, under our uh, legal norms and under the Constitution about how that should happen. I'm not. Okay? It is having, it's the equivalent of debating whether uh, the world is round with somebody. Okay? If you think that any human being subject to the jurisdiction of the Kenton County Court should have that experience as a parent, as a lawyer, as whatever, um, we need not, they need not discuss it with me because, uh, we're just going to disagree on that. Let's just save, uh, ourselves a time. I don't know anybody who would actually say that that's the case. So I wanted to just briefly, because it happens to be literally on the table, uh, just, just provide some, a, a little more color about, you know, some of the proof of this stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's exhaustive, it's objective, it's a matter of documents, it's not a matter of debate. And again, in the end, and what really finally I think was like God's tapping me on the shoulder to do something about this, because I was certainly reluctant to do anything about it for fear of exactly the consequences that have come. God tapping me on the shoulder was the gift of the physics, which was the timing of the court order. I, I that... We're, we're done here. Okay. And, and, and I, you know, you can sit in a room all day and try and come up with a way to justify simply the date on that court order. The single, you know, biggest order in, uh, in I mean, the, the final judgment in the case, the court's ruling on all the major issues. Okay. Which, by the way, wasn't that bad. I mean, despite all the shit tearing me apart, like, I, I, I'm a dad. Okay. I see my daughter. A lot. She's wonderful. Apple of my eyes are my other children, and I can't put into words and won't attempt to to explain what that young lady means for me. In part because of the price that I have paid um, for being a dad. And yes, there's some things to fix with that, but that's why we have courts of appeals. And like you know, the good news is that I have every reason to believe, anecdotally and every other form, that the rule of law prevails at the court of appeals. And that's why we have these things to, you know, fix this stuff. It's way more boring up there. I don't have, I don't think I'm going to have great stories. And Katie's handling all that. She's doing a great job. And we haven't had, actually, she hasn't come to me a single time and said, hey, man, I have to talk to you about something crazy and effed up. Not once. That would, that would be a good time to update me. She reports nothing. Okay. Now, whereas that is boring and does not generate good Facebook stories, which I try and share as a matter of levity. Le it, it is good from the perspective of like, that's the way this is supposed to go. Now, if there is a silver lining about the Kenton Family Court, it is that on a daily basis, seemingly, all of this nonsense generates some of the most surreal and from my perspective, greatest, like craziest stories, man, that uh, you can ever imagine. I'm sure they seem incredible. They're incredible to me. I often say to Katie, I call her at night. Did, I mean, did I? there's a lot of crazy shit that happened today. Did, did, did this happen? I mean, there's so much crazy nonsense that, you know, we hardly have uh, time to scratch the surface. So I understand why it might sound, sound incredible. But anyway, it does generate really great stories. And the Facebook posts that I've sought to put on, um, you know, there in the past, uh, I've just tried to, you know, Create joy for the benefit of others through the, you know, the humorous, the humorous events of my life, which there are plenty, and there is, I mean, let's face it, a large contingent of human beings who live very boring um, lives um, who rely on me for those stories. So I feel a special obligation. I mean, honestly, I think I'm going on a golf outing. 
like next week. And the only reason that I'm invited is because all these guys really just want to feel better about their lives and want to be entertained by them. The true story of my existence will show up on the first tee and they'll say, thanks, start talking to Nobody, I'm not that great at golf. I don't even know. I mean, I, I think they love me, but but, uh, but anyway, I, I, you know, if, look, if my misfortune or difficulties can create joy in the lives of others and contribute good, I think it's good to share that. In my experiences, it has, you know, it, it gives joy to others. So I'm going to, that's it, that's it. So again, kind of like, you know, uh, good, bad, right, pro, con. Court of Appeals follows the rule of law, gets the job done. That's the pro, uh, con, very boring in terms of like really creative, interesting, not creative, but really interesting like anecdotes. Trial court in uh, family court, totally corrupt, absolutely bizarre, um, in no way, shape or form, in my opinion, can it be described as a court of law. In 20 years of practicing law, from five as a federal prosecutor, I have difficulty attaching that term to what happens there, inside or outside the courtroom. Now, I don't say that lightly, um, but it's just the truth, okay? The pro is it generates wonderful, wonderful stories, okay? So that's it. Um, we could spend days on like the proof of the corruption, but I, I did since it was sitting on the table, want to just share a few more things since it was sitting on the table, okay? By no way, exhausted, okay? But just to give you an idea. The mischief, um, and the level of like uh, the commitment to uh, you know, take me down, if you will, or you know, which is being undertaken in part by judicial actors. Understand that is next level stuff. When we talk about like not a fair fight, okay, um, it's one thing to like take on some you know big powerful person who apparently is involved in it, like at least in this set, it's a private actor um, that has you know. A set of a set of tools and influence to wield. It is quite another who is acting under the auspices of a court. I don't have that in my I don't have that arrow in my quiver. You know what I mean? So this is beyond the David and Goliath thing and like the ability to um, throw punches. You know, in the in in the form of totally fraudulent, completely manufactured, and as a matter of physics, corrupt court orders. I, I can't do that. I can't issue an order that completely destroys a human being intentionally and <laughs> goes way beyond, above and beyond uh, in an effort to do that about somebody else, nor would I. Because I care about people, and these are human beings. In a million years, I would never do that to anybody, no matter what they had done to me, no matter how much I didn't like them. And frankly, no matter what they said to uh, you know, draw anything that I had done, that they felt was inappropriate in a serious way, out in the open. You know what I would do? I would engage it. I would speak to the merits of what they had to say. I would not attack ad hominem, their person. And if they were right, and I was wrong, I hope I would have the courage to say that. So that we can right the wrong. And if they were wrong, I would hope that I would have the courage to, on the facts and the merits, defend whatever, whatever actions were at issue. But anyway, it is just one example of the objective proof here of how cray cray some of the stuff is in the Kennedy Family Court that, without going into detail, some of the actors involved here have seen fit to create, one of the strategies here is to create other battlegrounds. Katie's divorce, bit one. Katie's divorce, I assure you, has nothing to do with me in any way, um, quite literally. It's her and her soon-to-be ex-husband and their children. And that is their own private business. And so for people to make that proceeding all about me, to use it as a battleground to, um, frankly, represent the interest of themselves at the expense of their client, to serve an agenda about which their client doesn't even know, uh, that benefits themselves, that is part of something way bigger and nothing to do with that proceeding, at the expense of their client, at the expense of the adverse party, Katie, at the expense of parent and kids. Guys, I have a problem with that. I think anybody would have a problem with that. And it's a fairly desperate thing. I mean, 
absolutely nothing here. Nothing. I mean nothing. Um, judging from the conduct of, of the actors involved here, would suggest in any way that I, that the things I'm saying are wrong. Okay. And literally everything, and I do mean everything, and it's a long roster to include doing things like that, align with the idea that what I am saying is true. Now, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that because I know it to be true. Physics is physics. The data on order is the data on the order. Documents are documents, and I've seen what I've seen. It would seem that other people understand that what I'm saying is accurate, namely those engaging in the fitness stuff. But anyway, what's the proof? In any event, this stuff, I'm gonna leave it like this, believe it or not, has made its way to the federal court in New York. I assure you that I did not put it there. It is quite interesting to compare uh, to see how the very same things are described by the United States Attorney's Office in the Southern District in New of New York, arguably the most prestigious um, prosecuting authority in, in all our land. And anyone that practices white collar law understands that's that's you know, we've got really smart people and really smart judges there. Okay. It is very, very interesting to see how the same things down here in little old family court in Kentucky, how those things are described, very same things when viewed by those other actors, by those other judicial actors. But let me tell you how they describe them. It happens to be on the table today. Those responsible for the mischief in Kenton County as part of their campaign against me came up with this idea and used others to execute it. This is really, really tragic and wrong. It's really wrong. To allege that um, I had some kind of conflict in, 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 with, with the recent trial that I had in New York based on my family court business in Kentucky. And all kinds of horrible things were said and really, you know, not nice things were said uh, about Katie and myself and the nature of our relationship, among other things. This is what the Southern District of New York has to say about what the actors down here are. In attempting to manufacture a conflict of interest. Page 23 of an order that I'm sure anyone interested can find. In attempting to manufacture okay, a conflict of interest. So, I don't know what the Kent Family Court thinks of all this. Um, an actor there is in the soup, so Whatever the court does here is merely a reflection in large measure of the way that actor is directing traffic or not. But all of the nonsense that they brought against me has, I can tell you, we, can, we know what the Southern District of New York and Federal Court thinks about it. It is manufactured. Not my word. Okay? I mean, this is a, a court and these are people that have nothing to do with what's going on down here. But have seen the very same thing. They're not, not their business to handle it, but insofar as it has been attempted to be used for mischievous purposes up there, I mean, those are the words of our adversary in New York. And I, you know, to the extent that I should be appreciative of them stating the obvious, uh, I am appreciative them. the obvious. Further, just because it was on the table, one of the things that I haven't talked about yet, but that I also have a big problem with is, I mean, very frankly, the rank misogyny and sexism of the Kent and Family Court. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to discuss that here. But I'm also not going to discuss whether it exists. Because I've been in the courtroom I've heard what I've heard, and I've seen what, it's, what I've seen, and let me tell you, 
it is as wrong as it gets. And when you have judicial actors, um, instead of addressing the merits of Katie Lawrence's legal arguments in court, which, by the way, you know, again, this is what you get when you're bringing the law in there. In two, again, two years, we haven't discussed the law at the same time. Not once. Then that really can't be. Okay, believe me, don't believe me. Not once. That's Katie. Not once. Two years, two separate litigations, a lot of stuff going on. Not a single time. Frankly, it is my goal. Okay, I don't get thrown in jail. Um, before we leave the place, to simply introduce everybody to the law. I've tried to do this in the past. It has not gone well. Okay. In any event, Katie's a member in good standing in the Kentucky bar. Okay. She happens to be a certain gender. She happens to be a certain age. I'm of a different age. I'm of a different gender. The other court actors, some of them are the same gender. Different ages, more senior. There's a certain judicial actor involved in one of our litigations, one of my litigations. These are different genders, but it's a different age. And if anybody wants to see this, just give me a call. But on one particular occasion, after Katie made a legal argument to the court, that particular male senior judicial actor got up, addressed me in an appropriate way, the other attorneys in an appropriate way, and then referred to Katie as my girlfriend, dismissively. Now, believe it or not, that's not the most shocking thing. I assure you that any court that I've ever been in, if something like that happened, if somebody didn't get it to that extent and said something that inappropriate, that offensive, that for sure the court would jump in and offer a stern rebuke. And luckily I haven't seen that very often, but to the extent that I've seen anything like that, I assure you, the judicial actors involved quite appropriately stepped in and lit them up as they should. It's dead wrong. One of the things that has repeatedly brought up is the nature of the relationship between Ms. Lawrence and I. And it has been brought up and brought up and brought up and brought up and brought up. Ms. Lawrence had to sit there on one particular occasion and have a three minute colloquy with the judge about the nature of our relationship, which has nothing to do with anything. But the court has indulged this. The preferential actors in the court keep saying it, which is, I guess, the only reason why the court indulges it. And that's how the Kenton Family Court deals with completely inappropriate innuendo that is suggested about my relationship with Ms. Lawrence. You want to know how the Southern District of New York, the highest, arguably, the, the highest you know, prosecuting authority in the land, because in, in, in one of the most uh, indisputably competent jurisdictions in the world, what it has to say about the very same thing, I'll tell you. It deals with that a single time and refers to it as a gratuitous reference. A gratuitous reference to the romantic relationship between Mr. Busey and Ms. Lawrence provide no basis to suspect that she's violated anything, blah, blah, blah. A gratuitous reference. For those of you who don't know the specific meaning of gratuitous, look it up in Webster's Dictionary. It is unwarranted and uncalled for. Real courts and real actors deal with things that are unwarranted and uncalled for once, and that's it. Kenton County Family Court spends hours upon hours upon hours, and the preferential actors involved here, the judicial actors at the core of this to assist them, make that stuff the fodder of all this stuff. Now, you won't find a more dramatic disparity, and again, that was just, that's just the stuff on the table, okay? I'm not even at the office. So, um, I offer that that way, you know, some additional fodder. It's all good, I'm good. Um, I'm really committed to doing the right thing, man. Um, and I feel like I was born to do that. And in particular, 
I feel like it's important to do the right thing on behalf of those uh, who can't. And no one knows more than me, the countless families and kids that have been affected by this. And, you know, I understand and appreciate the words of others encouraging me to be, you know, to not do so out of concern for me since it does involve a high degree of risk. And I recognize that. I hear them. Okay. But what I hear more loudly is the voice of all of those wonderful men and women who formed me and shaped me as a lawyer and as a man. And their voice, I assure you, is way louder. And collectively, as a chorus, it says simply this over and over and over again. Do the right thing. And I simply believe that this is the right thing. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm good. Have a great Saturday. Thanks, guys.